started. Today we will uh, continue to talk about the uh, math. Before we stop here, so we uh, you know how to read the command line argument. Now the to use the command line argument, we need to add two parameters to main function. The first parameter is argc, its data type is eight. And second one is a argv, this is a array of, of uh, pointers. So this pointer points you to charts. So you can think this is a array of strings. So argc, argc store the number of the number of command line arguments, including executable program name. And ARG of pointers, it stores the arguments. So command line arguments are a set of strings. So we use ARGV to store these strings. Now here is an example. Now, if we type the command line, now at the command line, we type the dot slash main. This main is a executable file name. And then we add other three arguments, file one, file two, file three. Now for this command line, we have four command line arguments, executable file name. So we have one, two, three, four. We have four command line arguments. So ARGC's value is four. strings. So now we can see we have four strings. These four strings are separated by white space. We have by, by white space. Now the first command line argument dot slash main are stored in ARGV zero. So we know that ARGV is a array, is a array. So the array in C and C++, the array index starts from zero. So the command line argument dot slash me stored in ARGV zero. ARGV zero. ARG to, to dot slash me this string. This is a So main is the exact dot slash means the path, the current directory. Dot slash means the current directory. And then ARGV pointed to the next string. The next string is file one. Uh, ARGV <clears throat> one point to file one. And ARGV two pointed to file two. ARGV three pointed to file three. So now we have four command line uh, arguments. The index <clears throat> index starts from zero, and then the max index valid index is uh, argc ar index is four minus one is three is three. So now the for the command line argument, the ARGV zero, ARGV zero always store the executable file name. And ARGV one to ARGC minus one are arguments to this executable file. So in this sample, file one, file two, file three are arguments to main this executable file. Now, another example, touch and a dot cp c dot cpp and now this is another command line argument example. Now at the command line, we type the shell command. Touch is a shell command. We add the a dot cpp space b. Now that means this the first the first command line argument, 
this touch is a uh, executable, it is an executable file. So in fact, all the shell command, all the shell command, they're executable file. This executable file are stored uh, on the system folder. And then we add four uh, arguments to touch this command. Now in this example, the RGC, in this example, the ARGC is five. ARGC is five because we have five command arguments. One, two, three, four, five. ARGC is five. And now what's the ARGV zero? ARGV zero, it pointed to touch. And then ARGV one pointed to ARGV2, ARGV2 onto to B dot CPP this string. The ARGV3 onto to C dot CPP this string. And then the last one is a ARGV4 onto to CPP this string. Now, the index. The index starts from zero to ARGC minus one. So the maximum valid index is uh, ARGC minus one. Now in this sample, ARGC is five. So the maximum valid index is a uh, five minus one is four. Okay, now, uh, Now, in this example, <coughs> the file name is command line.c. And we have the main function. Now, this main function has two, this main function, two uh, parameters, argc and argv. Okay, so now uh, in the example, and uh, in this example here, I use ARGC, ARGV. You can use parameters. So the parameter name can be different, but you need to use this parameter type. Type is star. But you can use this. See here, use a different parameter name. And then in this main function, we have these two, they are local variable. They are stored in stack. So I equal to zero and double B. If statement, we check if the RGC not equal to five. So this means this five command argument. So if ARGC is not equal to five and print out this, print out this message, print out this to the screen and then return one, return exit, normal exit. So that if ARGC, if the user enter the command line argument less than five, and we may see this message, we may see this message So the program exit. Now the, uh, so we use this if statement to check the number of command line arguments. And then if we have five command line argument, and then we move on to next if statement. So if D equal to ATOF GV4. So now when the ARGC equal to five, equal to five, that means for GV for this array, it's indexes from zero, to five minus one to four. So the last command line argument is stored in ARGV4. This function, ATOF, this function means read the string 
and it get this one argument to so to um uh, to uh to a float number convert this string now argv this is a array it stores the strings so now atof this function convert this string to a double number to a double uh, value now if it can convert to the double value if this is a one point one or one or two or three if this string can be converted to a double value return this number otherwise if in b c or we have c dot cpp this string not be converted to a double number or convert to a, a integer. So now this function will return zero. Okay, now, uh, let me explain this. Uh, in the ARGV, RGV 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we, we store strings. These are all strings. But now, this function, the ATOF, this function convert a string to a value, to an integer value or to a float value, to a double value. So if this convert, if this uh, convert successful, this function will return this integer number or double. If this function is not successful and we have a character, or we have a real string, for example, the A, B, C, or in stored in this item, in this string. Now, that means this string cannot be converted to an integer or double value. Now, this function will return zero. So the, now, this if statement, An argument can be converted to a integer or to a double value, and then we, and then we can, we can move to the the statement next to if. So, an argument cannot be converted to integer or double value. It will print out this information. Error. Last argument must be double value. Now, assuming we have the last argument is, uh, last luck argument is the double value or the integer, and then we can move the statement after this if. So we print out ARGC. We print out ARGC. Now we get five. And then from the I, well, i less than ARGC minus one. So now the i's value is zero. i's initial value is zero. Now the ARGC is five minus, ARGC minus one is four. So now this well loop print, print ARGV zero, ARGV one, ARGV two, and ARGV three. So when i less than four, well, I less than four, we print out ARGV I. So now we can say the I's value is uh, zero, one, two, and three. So here there's there's no equal sign. There's no equal sign. So when I equal to four, when I equal to four, this condition, well condition is false of the well loop and go to the next statement. So now that means this well loop, GV0, GV1, ARGV2, ARGV, print out the, print out D. What is a D? D is a 
double value corresponding to the last argument. So that means we print out the last argument and then return zero. Okay, now I will compile this, run this program and see what we will get to the party. I use Let me see, command line dot C. Now I will compile this file, command line dash O, the me. Now the name is me. Now this, this file is compiled successfully. Now I I run this spell dot slash me. Now we can see, I just type the executable file name and I didn't add any other command line argument. Now we do the usage uh, executable file name and then three and then for argument. Okay, now I add this me. Uh, fail one, fail two, fail three, fail four. Now, if I type it, what kind of result I'm, I will get? You know, if we go here. Now, I have five commands. So this if statement, this is the DC is five. This is. I will, I will be here. So now, now the last command line <coughs> argument is a fail four. So fail four, when we try to convert fail four to fail for this string to a, to a number, the integer or float number. It, yeah, the fail four cannot be converted to a number. So now what we, we may get this error last. Error, last argument must be a float number. But it doesn't matter if I, if I type an integer, yeah, it still works. So the, or this string can be converted to a, to a double value. Now I type 10, fail one, fail two, fail three, and 10. Now we can see this program print out ARGC, five is a ARGC value. And then the well loop, GV, ARGV zero, ARGV one, ARGV two, ARGV three. And then one is a D, this is a double value. D is a double, data type is double. So that we print out the double value. Zero, zero, zero. This is a, one, this time is a string. 
And then we use ATOF convert this to a double value. So now we get the 10.000. Any questions? Uh, if you if you don't have questions, we will now we will take a look at the homework two, and we will talk about the uh, at the homework two. Homework two is uh, um, let me see the homework in the homework two we will write a toy shell. Uh, why I call it toy shell because it's a very simple shell. It it can it can do nothing. It just uh, want to show you how the shell works. Now the Linux and the Now, I, all the command I type is a shell command. So now you are trying to develop a shell. So the, now I, in the Linux, we use the BA shell. Now we try to develop a toy shell similar to this, to the BA shell, but more simple than the, uh, the simple than the, the BA shell than the, all the current existing shell. So I call it uh, toy shell. Uh, now the, I will not, let's just briefly review this. So when we log on to the Linux lab, GB359 or GB358 computers, the operating system starts running a program called shell. So uh, in the Linux lab, we use a BA shell, bash. The uh, purpose of shell is to package system services under the control of an interactive command, command interpreter. So shell is a command line, is a, a command line interface. It's a command interpreter. So we can use shell to access uh, operating system services and operating system command to interact with operating system. Now we list all the files and the folders under the current directory. So now we can see this file stored on our second secondary storage. And we also can change the directory, change the directory. So we use shell command to interact with the uh, uh, operating system and to access the uh, kernel services. Uh, when the shell program, so the shell program, program is a passive entity. When the power, when the shell program is wrong, it becomes a process. So process is the, what is a, a active entity. So when we put a program, when we run a shell command, this program becomes a process. The shell person. Now, after we run a shell command, this becomes a process. And it's output. So what is a prompt? What is a command prompt? Here, the dollar sign is a command prompt. Dollar sign means we can enter a new shell command. This dollar sign means we can enter a new command. Okay, the shell output a command prompt now in the, it's a dollar sign to the screen and then we to read input entered from keyboard. So after user, after I tapped some letters and press the return key to the end, to end the line, 
the shell restart and read these characters into an internal array. The shell that analyzes the content of the internal command and the arguments. Now, when we have dollar sign, I can type, I can, I can type the shell command. I type the shell command when I, so these are characters I typed from, and then at the end of this, this line, I type the enter key. I type the enter key, the shell program do it. The shell program read this line, read this character I entered and analyzes it to store this in array, in ARGV1, AR, ARGV0, ARGV1. So read this command line argument and analyzes this command uh, argument, extract command and argument. So for some command such as cd, cd means a change current directory, the shell can execute the command directly. Well, the shell, when the shell finish executing a built in command, it output another command prompt to the screen. So when, now I press enter, the shell command, the ls, the ls will when this shell command is done, we can see the shell uh, the command prompt, the dollar sign. That means now I can enter another shell command. Now, uh, when the shell finish finish executing executing a building command, it output another command prompt to the screen. For other commands such as ls, the shell search directory specified shell path environment variable, looking for the file named ls. ls is a shell command. So this is a, in fact, this is an executable file. All the shell command is an executable file stored under the, stored under the, uh, file, under the folder B. Okay. Uh, so ls is also a executable file. Now the um, the shell command looking for this file and execute this file. The file. If the file is found and the file is executable, the shell will evoke a service of the operating system to run the file by creating a new process. Shell is waiting for the new process to finish executing. So when the new process finished executing, the shell restart and output another command prompt to the screen. Now, uh, so this assignment, repeat this process, we'll repeat this process to read the user to read this command line argument and then put this into string and call the responding function to execute this command and then print and then print out the command now in this homework we will do this process, the toy shell will do this process. The a shell program is not real special in any way. In fact, there are actually many different available to choose from. So we have B shell, B shell, K shell, Z shell, a lot of shells. Now the, um, okay, now we, we, we are using B A shell, we are trying to develop I shall. Uh, in this homework, you are required to write a shell name, a shell program called MyShell. This shell run on the Linux operating system, specifically one of the Linux machine in the Jet in the GB three fifty nine. So you log onto this machine from your uh, your Coyote account.
So the uh, the shell so this shell program must provide services to support the following command and features. So the first one, the first command is a uh, stop. Stop means terminate. And then the set shell name. So set shell name. Set shell name. Set shell name. Uh, this command need one argument. Need one argument. This command shall set the shell name in the my shell command prompt to shell name. Okay, I, I will show you this. And now, after we run this toy shell, we get my shell greater than. So my shell is a. Uh, current shell name. So we can change it. We can change my shell, we can change it. So we use a set shell name to change the my shell, this current shell session name. So now the uh, we add the string, we add the string to set shell name and we can change the my shell to this user entered shell name. Right here, if no shell name is defined, shell should be the default shell name. Uh, I will show you example later. So the second shell name, the third command, built-in command is set terminator. Now the terminator, the mm -hmm. my shell and greater than, greater than is a terminator. Now by default, we use greater than as terminator change it to dollar to equal sign. So we can use a set terminator to change it. And next one is a new name. So new name, this is a, uh, the most difficult uh, in this homework. So the new need to, uh, means to, uh, means to add, Build in command to other command to the um, to the old command or I see. I I will I will not read this. I will show you example. Uh, this is a new name. New name. We have two options: one string and two string. You save new name to a file save new name to a file and then read new name from a file. And this shell also can execute the Unix command. So what is the Unix command? LS, CD, patch, these are all Unix command. Now I will show you, I will show you the, uh, the toy shell, the mesh shell. Okay, now I already complete this shell. Uh, this uh, uh, file name is my shell.c. Now I will I will remove the previous executable file. Okay, the my file name is a my shell.c. C file. So first step, I compile it. Shell dot C, and the executable file name is a uh, my shell. Dash O my shell. Now I get the executable file my shell. So dot slash my shell. So we can see after we run this our my shell. My shell is a shell name. So the uh, in my and the shell name, the default shell name is my shell. And then the command line prompt is a greater than. Now I can tap the that the first one I will try the help. 
the help, this command is to all the build in command. These are build in command. This is a command we need to implement. So we need to implement one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we need to implement this nine. Now the first one, the first command I will try is a set shell name. Now the, the shell name is my shell. Now I can change it. I change it to toy shell. Now, set shell name, toy shell. That means I want the shell name. I want to set the shell name as toy shell. After I press enter, we can see the toy shell and then the command prompt. I change the shell name from my shell to toy shell. This is a set shell name command. And now I also can have the set shell name. Now for the set shell name, I command line argument, <laughs> only the build in command set shell name. I press enter. So now we can see we get the default shell name, my shell. In this command, we can add a string, we can add the command line to this command. So now this command will use this string as a shell name. Or we just uh, said uh, we don't add any argument to this command. We get the default shell name. Okay, this is a set shell name. And then the next one is a set terminator. Set terminator. So terminator. It's greater than this sign is a terminator. So when we see this data means we can enter a new, we can enter terminator is greater than. I can change it to dollar sign. Now we can see the terminator is dollar sign. Terminator. I can change it to I can change it to um, equal sign. Now we can see the terminator is equal sign. When we see the terminator, we can enter the shell command. Now set terminator. Now I type this command set terminator, but I I don't add any uh, any character or any string here. Press enter. So now we get the default. Default terminator is greater than. Okay, this is a set shell name and set terminator. And then the new name. New name is a difficult one. New name. Okay. Now, uh, this command, we call them old name. This is a built in command. Also, the Linux command name and we can put a new name to this command so the the existing command existing building command and the linux call them old name we can give them new name so now the new name uh, we have we have command help my help help uh, Now, this means uh, I have a command help. Uh, I want to give this command a new name. The new name is uh, my help. Okay. Now I type enter. I type enter. So now I have my help and the help. My help is uh, another name of help. My help is an uh, alien of. Now I type my help. It's equivalent to I type command help. Okay. So my help here, I type the command help and get this output. List all the built-in command. 
and here I type help, I get same output because um, my help is the the my help is a new name. Help is now if we go here, so my new name, my help help. of help. Now I can add more new name, um, new name, C, uh, my CD, CD. Now we have the built-in command CD. Built-in command CD. I create the new name, my CD. Do one more new name. Now new name set shell name. Okay. Uh, set shell name. Set shell name. Set shell name. Set shell name. This command is long, so I want to create the short command for the set shell name. So SSN is a no, SSN for shell. SSN is equivalent to set shell name. Do the set shell name this command. Okay, now new name. Now let me see. Now the, uh, here we add two new name this and uh, we add a new name for this old name. But we also can only add one new name after this new name command. So this means Not done yet. Not done yet. Not done yet. Now, uh, okay. Now we have this the set uh, set shell name. Uh, now I, one set shell name. Now the set shell name already has a new name. Is the SSN. Now I set another. New name SSN one for set shell name. The SSN one will be okay. Now, now we new name SSN one set shell name. Now the SSN one is a new shell name. Now, if we type SSN, we can see. Directory. So SSN doesn't exist. Replaced by SSN1. Now the, uh, okay, this is uh, this part. If uh, already exists, then the new aliens replace the old. Now, uh, the first option, this is the second option. So now we, we talked about the second, means we add a new name for old name. We use a new new name to replace the old new name. So we turn it down. And now the first option, First option, the, the previously defined alias. SN1, SSN1, that means we will delete this new name. Now, let me two. Uh, 
new name. New name as as um, with uh, my CD. We have uh, my CD. Man CD. Now we CD means we delete your name. So I will have to delete. I delete as as a one is new name. Now, if we type the SSN1, we see the no such file or directory. Okay, this uh, new name, the most difficult one in the in the homework too. Uh, we will take a look at how to implement this data. Now, I show you all the uh, all the building command. Now we. Talk about the set show names, set terminator new name, and then list new names. Now we add some new names in this shell session. And we can list new names. Now list new names means now we have a my help. This is a new name for help building command. My CD is a new name of a CD command. SSN. That shell name. So we can see the SSN is that shell name. Now we have three new names in this shell session. There's a list of new names. And then what is a save? Means to save this three line, these three new names in a text text file. So the n, n new names dot. We add a file name at, uh, after this command save new names, and press enter. Now we can see we we have a text file. Now, what in this text file? We use cat to show this. Now, in this text file, we have new name, corresponding old name. That means the least new names, least this will save this three, three lines to a file. To this file to n -n as new names.txt. Save this right three line to a text file. To a text file. And this is a this uh, and we also have read new names. So read new new names stored in the file. Now we know that in the ns.txt we have three new names. Now we can read these new names to the screen. New names. And we have the print out this file to the screen. And then the last one. Uh, okay. Now this shell, this uh, toy shell also can execute the Unix command. So the cat is a Unix command. And ls is a Unix command. And uh, copy cp is a Unix command. So in this shell, we also can execute the Unix command. The uh, Unix building the shell command. Okay, now, uh, this command is uh, the last command is let me see. 
uh, stop. Stop. session. Close this cell session, then we go back to the to our folder toy shell. <clears throat> And this is a toy shell. We implement this build in command. Let's go back to now for this. We implement this command. We can see the stop is three parts. Let me go from here. The implement the implementing my shell. And capture result this is 40 points. 40 points and stop is three points. Show name three points and set to be three points. And then the new name, this is 10 points. And list new name, six points, save new names, six points, and then read new names, five points. Uh, execute the Unix command two points and help two points. Now, hmm. uh, please note that you must handle all the built-in command with exactly the same syntax. So that's an important part of the shell program will be to parse command entered at the command prompt to break them down into their So once a command has been <clears throat> parsed, the are <clears throat> the component parts can be checked to ensure that a valid and that it adhere to the required syntax. So if the if we user enter the wrong <clears throat> enter this uh, the command use the wrong syntax, your program can give the error message can handle these errors. So for this uh, problem, the result are worth forty points out of. So the breakdown is uh, you already see see there. Uh, to show your proof, uh, your toy shell can work correctly. You need to use the script log file. You capture all the results in a script log file, and in the you include all these steps. And also we we need to uh, handle the errors. So finally, the demonstrate that your shell can handle errors. So your shell program should effectively effectively identify and recover from errors. So now, what does it mean? Now here, I type the SSN. This new name, this new exists. Does it? Uh, your program will give the will give this error message no such file or directory so your program cannot and exit this uh, exit uh, your shell session your uh, shell session so give the error message and then user to enter a new command not just the exit the shell session and go here so now the, for example, the bad input or uh, inability to execute the command should not cause my shell to crash. So the error, the five points of, so in order to receive these five points for error handling, you must be able to handle at least five different kinds of errors. So also you, you need to capture this error handling in a separate log file. Now I will show you this. I'm not sure if I have the, now first one, first one, uh, I have set a new name, I add some new name, new name. And I 
list. Now I have a one new name in this session. Now I want to save new save new names. So save new names. This expect a file name. So save these new names in this file. But now I I I didn't enter the file name. I press enter. So my my program cannot just crash. My program should give the message to say that you need to enter the file name, not crash. This is an error handling. Okay, now my program said expected argument to save new names, not just okay, my program. And it just gave the message and then and give the command prompt, wait for the new command. Now this is error handling. This is one, uh, one error hand handling. And now I also can have the new names. Read new names also expect a file name because I read new names means a read. Now I didn't add the file name. So now we can see expected argument to read new name. So I get the error message, not the system crash and exit. And now oh, one more, let's see the CD how to stop. New name. Now I type the SSN. SSN exists. This command doesn't exist. And it's not a, so now we can see no such file or directory. <coughs> this is another error handling. So two and three. So in your program, you need to show me five error handling get the five points. Um, okay, now, I will show you how to do this homework later. The five points for the error handling and <clears throat> the five to add the opening command, add your name, purpose of this program, this opening comment block. Add the, add the opening comment block before the, before, uh, at the, the program file. Uh, there should be comments at the beginning of the program. And you also need to add the comment block for a function. You add a function and then you need to add the comment block for the function. So purpose of this function and the parameters for the, of this function return value of this function. And also the indentation and the spacing. Add indentation, if you have the for loop, while loop, add the indentation if, uh, inside the body. And also the if body, the statement in the if body, you need to add the uh, indentations to make your program readable. A single space should be added on both set of binary operators. And place braces on separate lines. And use descriptive identifiers. The variable name use uh, the meaningful variable names. Don't just use A, B, C, D. So uh, we need to make the program easy to read. Uh, the deliverables. So uh, for this homework, this is uh, five points. The first homework, uh, this is 50 points, 50 points. And you, uh, for this homework, you can, this homework, you can work alone or work in group. 
So if you work in group, only one of members of your group submit the assignment to Canvas on behalf of your group. So now if in your group you have three members and only one member submit assignment to Canvas, team members name and ID at the opening comment block of source code file. So the source code file is homework 2.c or .cpp. So the, uh, in the group, you, you can have uh, maximum, you can have three uh, members in a group. Maximum three members in a group. Uh, now for the submission, you submit .c or .cpp file. If you use a header file, you also include the .h file. And a single script log file, homework to log.txt, showing the correct execution of your shell. And a single script log file, homework to error log.txt, showing your shell. Okay, now three files C file or CPP file, and two script log file. To script log file. And now let's take a look at how toy shell. Um, we don't start from scratch. Here we have the, here is a tutorial. Uh, here is a tutorial, write a shell in C. So you can read this tutorial. And in this tutorial already implement three build-in command. It already implement three build-in command. CD uh, and uh, exit. So already implement three uh, build-in command. And then we, we can download this file and add more build in command or add more functions in this in this source file and to add another six building command or six uh, functions in this file now please read this tutorial after class i will start from here now we can get the code from the GitHub the source file, the main.c. Copy. Uh, VI. B I let me see the homework zero two dot C the homework zero two dot C. Paste. and then save the file. Now I get the homework 02.c. I compile it. Now, but I didn't assign the executable file name. What is the executable file name? Executable file name. What is uh, what is the a.out? Yeah, good. The default executable file name is a.out. Out. Okay, now this is a uh, the the this tutorial uh tutorial code. Now I we have cd three building command. 
Now we will add more built-in command in this thought spell. Now I exit. Okay. You uh you will read this. Okay. You can read this tutorial uh, after class, but now I just briefly uh briefly show the how this tutorial implement this shell. Uh, Okay, we start from the main function. So start from the main function, ARGC, ARG, input. Now the, uh, so the main function called the loop function. Now let's take a look at the loop function. The loop function, what? The loop function, this is a well loop, do well loop. So the loop function print out greater than, here the greater than is a, is a terminator or the command prompt. So when the user sees a prompt, user can enter the command. And then the and then line equal to this function. So that this function will read the read this line. Enter a line of uh, command line argument. This function read this line. The user entered this line. The next function, next function split the line, or we say the tokenize this line. And then the third function execute, execute, so this uh, called the corresponding function, execute the, this function and use this user entered command. Now I will give you an example. Now the new name, new name, my health, health. Now the, as a user, I enter this line. So when I say the, when I say this, now my current data is greater than. Now I enter this line. I enter this line, the read line, and this function, read line, this function will read this line to the variable line. So line is the store stream. So now this line is stored in and this variable. And then the next function, split line, this function will read line read the new name, my help, help, and pass it to the split line. Split line will separate this command line argument with the white space, and then get the ARGS. is a array of strings. Now the RGS. After the split line, we get the ARGS, Zero is a new name, point to new name or equal to new name. ARGS one is what is a my help. These are all strings. These are all strings and um, I, uh, this is my help. Two equal to help. The entire line and store it in the variable line. And then the second function, split line, split line and uh, tokenize this strings to the ARGS. Now the ARGS zero is a fourth string and ARGS one store the second string, ARGS two store the third string. And then this string, 
to LSH the execute function. Now in the execute function, execute function see the new name. The execute function will call this function, call the new name function. So now we need to for each building command we need to create and implement. Now, uh, let's take a look at the execute. Okay, this is split line. We, we don't change the split line this function. Split line, we also don't change it. Now the execute function. Yeah. First, the execute function will check if the ARGS is null pointer. So the, if the ARGS zero is null, means the, the command is null. So do nothing, just exit. So if the command is not null, we use a for loop. Search the, to see if this is a built-in command. So if it's a built-in command, we call the corresponding function and we pass this argument to this function. And now what is a built-in function? Let's go to the built-in function. This is a built-in function. In this tutorial, tutorial, uh, this tutorial implements three built-in function, three built-in command. So we have three built-in functions. Responding this, respond this three built-in function. So now we have CD help and exit call the corresponding function. Now the let's take a look at the help. Now this is a CD function and the help function and the exit function. Each build function. Now the help function print out this information and then use a for loop to print out build in command. So the build in command, the build in command name is stored this array, build in string this array. The build in string array is here. This is a built in uh, command string, and this is the function corresponding to this command. Uh, CD, this will call this function. And then the help, this command will call LSH help function. And then exit will call this function. So now the difference is this is the built in command. Uh, function name corresponding to this command. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to add building command and implement these functions. Okay. Now, continue on this next next week, next Tuesday. So please take a the tutorial and try this uh, the single in this source code. Uh, sorry, Professor, uh, which day is a due day of the second homework? Let me take a look at it. So we can change the, the, the March 3rd, okay. Thank you, Professor. Have a good one.